Okay, we're going to look at the valence bond theory in this lecture. So in the valence bond theory, this is the simplest idea of how bonds occur in uh, molecules. It's not the best theory. It, it doesn't explain a lot of things, but it's the simplest one that we find useful. Uh, in the valence bond theory, what we're uh, the, what, what uh, we find that bonding comes because when atoms go and overlap, uh, their or when their orbitals overlap, they actually can find a lower energy state, so they stay overlapped, which means they make a bond. Um, if we look at uh, the noble gases, they're really low in energy and totally unreactive because of it. And all of them have this S2P6 arrangement, except for helium, all have this S2P6 arrangement. And what we find is that all of the atoms uh, will react in order to make this S2P6 arrangement because it gives them lower energy. So how do they get this S2P6 arrangement? They do it by giving and taking electrons to form ionic bonds or they do it by sharing electrons to form covalent bonds. So the lowest energy for hydrogen would be S2, which would give it a, uh, an electron configuration equivalent to helium. For all the elements bigger than hydrogen and helium, they all seek to get this S2P6 arrangement. So when we show covalent bonds, what we usually use are the Lewis, Lewis dot structures, and that's what we're going to be using in organic chemistry. We do have a few ionic bonds, and to show them, what we do is we just put a charge on, let's say, the ionic bond between a carbon and a lithium would be carbon with a negative charge on it and a non-bonding pair, and then lithium with a positive charge on it. But initially, we're going to stay away from the ionic bonds, and we're going to focus on the covalent bonds. So the covalent bonds really are two electrons, or two dots, as they would say. Two electrons form one bond, and we usually write it as a line. We rarely use uh, two electrons to show a bond. It's much easier just to draw a line. Now, we do show the non-bonding pairs as two dots. But um, sometimes we even leave off the non-bonding pairs and just know they're there, but not write them. If you count up all the bonds and the non-bonding pairs, that sum will give you the valence electrons. So to have S2P6, which is eight electrons, you would have to have either four bonds or three bonds and one non-bonding pair or two bonds and two non-bonding pairs or one bond and three non-bonding pairs, except for hydrogen, which never has any non-bonding pairs and only has a single bond, and that's it. So what we're going to be looking for in our Lewis dot structures is looking for everything to have an octet on it through some way, except for hydrogen, which always just has one bond. Okay, here's an example. You can see that carbon here has four bonds, so it's good. Here, nitrogen has three bonds and one non-bonding pair, so it's good. Oxygen here has two bonds and two non-bonding pairs, so it's good. And here, there's a combination of uh, some of the previous ones. Notice, hydrogen always has just one bond. Okay, so how do we make these? The easy way is to always have carbon having four bonds, hydrogen having one bond, Nitrogen having three bonds and one non-bonding pair. Oxygen always has two bonds and two non-bonding pairs. And then halogens, which we give the symbol X, to have one bond and three non-bonding pair. Anything less than this or more is going to be unstable. Um, we can't have them. For instance, nitrogen can have two bonds and two non-bonding pairs, but it's going to be unstable because it's going to be an anion. Um, if carbon has three bonds and one bond, non-bonding pair, well, it's going to be unstable and it's going to be an anion. Sometimes carbon has just three bonds on it. Well, then it is less stable because it's a carbocation. And we're going to learn how to predict what the charge is based on formal charge. 
So that's going to be coming. But right now, these standards give us a stable molecule that you can store in a bottle and it's not going to be reactive. Non-bonding pairs sometimes are not written. Right now, in the very week, first week, we're going to put non-bonding pairs there. And a lot of times in the future, you're going to see me make a point of putting the non-bonding pairs there because the reaction occurs through the non-bonding pairs. But oftentimes we leave them off. Don't let it bother you. It's just going to happen sometimes, and you're going to have to uh, look at it and say, oh, yeah, there's a non-bonding pair if you need to know that it's there. And you do it by just knowing ni nitrogen, for instance, has to have three bonds and a non-bonding pair for stability. Okay, so now what I want you to do is take these rules and complete these Lewis dot structures, putting the non-bonding pairs in as necessary. Pause, put them in, and then check your answers with uh, as I go over them. Okay, so for the first one, the oxygen is going to need two non-bonding pairs. For the second one, we're going to see the nitrogen and the oxygen both need non-bonding pairs, and there's two on the oxygen, one on the nitrogen. On this Lewis dot structure, again, nitrogen has one non-bonding pair, and there are two. On the oxygen. If I look at this structure, there are no non bonding pairs needed anywhere. It's good. This one, the chlorines need three non bonding pairs each. This one, you just need a non bonding pair on the nitrogen. So that's really pretty simple. It's basically memorization and remembering to put them in or remembering they're there if they're not there and you're just reading along. Don't let it bother you. Now complete these structures all the way by putting in the necessary bonds and the non-bonding pairs so that you have an octet on every atom. Go ahead, pause, and then check your answers with me. Okay, so this first one is formaldehyde. Let's look at this. Every carbon has to have four bonds. The hydrogens can only have one bond. So there has to be a double bond to the oxygen. And then the oxygen also has to have two non-bonding pairs. If I look at this molecule, the nitrogen has to have a bond and a non-bonding pair. So that, that will be a single bond to the nitrogen and a non-bonding pair on the nitrogen. That's going to mean that there has to be two bonds to the oxygen. And of course, two bonds, two non-bonding pairs on the oxygen also. In this molecule, you can see that we have to have a single bond to the hydrogen here and here and here. That means this oxygen has to have two non-bonding pairs. And then these carbons are going to have to have a double bond in order to have four bonds on them. In the valence bond theory, we are looking at orbitals overlapping to form a bond, and we basically say a collision causes orbital overlap. They then find a lower set of energy being overlapped, and so they stay together after the collision. The electrons are paired in orbitals and attracted to the nuclei. When they overlap, they are shared by both nuclei. When they overlap in a way in which it's head-on, so that means that it's like uh, that, 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 that the overlap is between the two nuclei. We call it head-on overlap. Then what happens is we get a sigma bond. And you see if I draw a line from this hydrogen to that hydrogen, you see the overlap is occurring there. So we call that a sigma bond. And so this hydrogen actually has the bonding electrons, or the only electrons that are in it, in a sigma bond. Uh, what, what happens is when that sigma bond forms, you, the two unpaired electrons in separate orbitals are a higher energy. Two paired electrons in a shared orbital actually are lower energy because they have each two nuclei to be attracted to. And so a huge amount of energy is released and then they stay together because they don't want to go to a higher energy. Everything's always seeking the lowest possible energy. So they form a bond and stay there. And uh, once they form the bond, they don't 
they're not static. They don't just sit there. What they actually do is vibrate back and forth. All bonds are constantly wiggling and waggling and vibrating. And so once the bond forms, as they come in and overlap, they start getting too close, so they push away, and then they start stretching that bond, and that increases the energy, so they pull back in, and they're constantly doing that, stretching out and going in, stretching out and going in, and it vibrates back and forth, and they kind of, uh, they stay uh, vibrating because going out and staying out would be higher energy, and getting too close would be lower energy, and so they just wiggle back and forth right in that intermediate area.